Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, Naturally Beautiful Girl. So today I'm finally going to be bringing to you a video all about dry shampoo and if you guys have been watching my videos for any length of time you probably know that I have oily skin and unfortunately along with my oily skin I also have a really oily scalp and so really since I've been in high school I have been an avid dry shampoo user and when I was using conventional beauty, I would use Batiste, which is an aerosol uh, dry shampoo, which for a lot of reasons, I quit using that. One being just the ingredients, another just being the fact that it is an aerosol spray can. And so when I switched over to non-toxic beauty, I have been searching for the perfect dry shampoo. So especially recently, I've noticed that there have been a lot of new dry shampoo re releases in non-toxic beauty. So I wanted to try them all out and kind of tell you guys what I like and what I don't like in these different dry shampoo formulas. And that way you can find one that works well for you. And one thing to keep in mind as well is I do have <laughs> brunette hair, so it is pretty dark. And so one of the things I'm looking for in dry shampoos is whether or not it gives my hair a white cast because if you're a brunette, you really don't want your hair to uh, look kind of gray or white because of the dry shampoo that you're using. Although I do have to say, I think having dry shampoos that don't white cast when your hair is blonde is also really important because I used to actually highlight my hair. So my hair was more or less blonde for quite a few years. And even then I would find some dry shampoos would actually make my hair still look kind of gray or white. So what I'm really going to be judging these dry shampoos on is ease of application. Also the effectiveness at removing oil, whether or not they're volumizing and whether or not they give my hair a gray or white cast. So I'm going to start off with a dry shampoo that I've been using for years in non-toxic beauty. And this one is from Coco Lavish. So Coco Lavish is an Etsy shop and um, sh the owner of Coco Lavish makes a lot of non-toxic, um, I guess, body care, hair care, skincare products, but not makeup. And I originally tried this dry shampoo because Ashley from Green Bunny video, I believe that's the name of her YouTube channel, um, she really, really liked this dry shampoo. And one of the things that drew me to it was the price this is pretty affordable. Um, you do get three ounces of dry shampoo and I believe it's around the, between like the eight to $10 mark. So I thought it was a really good value. And also it does come in two tints. There's the brunette version, which I have here, but there's also a blonde version as well. And out of all the dry shampoos I've tried, this one is one of the most tinted. So if you do have very dark brunette hair, this one is a brown powder, as you can see in the top here. So the way I like to use this is I just kind of dump it out into my hair. It's kind of got a salt shaker format and then I just massage it in with my fingers. This absorbs my, the oils in my hair super well. Like th there's a reason why I've been repurchasing this dry shampoo for years and years is because it really does work. It really absorbs the oil. It doesn't give my hair a white or gray cast and it has a really nice scent. Um, I, I can't really put my finger on it, but it just is a really nice refreshing scent. The ingredients in this are just cocoa powder, arrowroot powder, and then essential oils for the scent. So it really has got a very minimal ingredient list and it just works really well. The only cons I have about this is the salt shaker kind of application can get a little bit messy. I find that when I use this, I kind of end up with dry shampoo all over my bathroom. Um, it's just what ends up happening. Also, the because this is so heavily tinted, it changes the color of my hair a little bit. Like it actually makes it look kind of the color of the dry shampoo itself. This dry shampoo is close in color to my hair, but it's not an exact match. So that ends up happening with this. Also, this dry shampoo doesn't give you any additional volume. Some of the other dry shampoos I'm going to be talking about are kind of gritty and give your hair a little bit of volume. This one, it just absorbs the oil. I really still do recommend this. This is really an outstanding dry shampoo, but really just the mess of it is why I started looking for a different alternative. But I think 
it's a really great option especially for the price and I really enjoy being able to support a smaller um, Etsy shop. This dry shampoo I think I saw organically Becca trying this one and this is the daily dry shampoo so it's in a tub and you use a brush applicator and you dip the brush in and then kind of brush the dry shampoo into your hair. I actually really like the application method of this dry shampoo. Um, I think this is one of the least messy ways to apply the dry shampoo. You just have to make sure when you dip your brush in that you knock the excess powder off prior to going into your hair. Once again, this one, the ingredients are really straightforward. The main ingredients being um, arrowroot powder, cornstarch, baking soda, and then a whole bunch of essential oils to scent it as well. Also has a really great smell, but here's one of the cons about this dry shampoo. So hopefully you can see this here, but the dry shampoo is pretty white. And this is actually the dark version of the shampoo. So that's where my issue arises. There is a dark and a light version of the shampoo, the dark being for brunette hair and then the light feet being for blonde hair. But the problem is that it really is more or less white. So when I put this in my hair, it does in fact give me a white cast. So that's really the main drawback with the dry shampoo is you have to be very, very sparing in usage. Once again, it does a really great job of, of absorbing oil, but it also doesn't give you any extra volume in your hair. Although I really like the application method, I don't like the white casting of it. I was actually sent this and I liked it and I posted it out on Instagram, but I don't think I would repurchase it just because of the white casting aspect. If they made the dark shampoo darker in tint, um, I would be interested in repurchasing this. So this is a four ounce tub, so it is a little bit bigger than the Coco Lavish, and I believe the price of this is in the $20 to $25 price range. So it's a little bit more expensive. You do get more product, but it's still, it is more expensive than the Coco Lavish. And also you kind of either need to purchase the brush to go with this or use another brush. So you still need another tool to apply it, but it's less messy than the Coco Lavish. The next one that I've tried, and I've actually, this is my second bottle of this. This is the Kaya Naturals Takasumi Detox Overnight Dry Shampoo. It's a pump, but it's not an aerosol. And so you are able to actually just pump this directly into your hair. And I find that because of that, it is less messy. There's one other dry shampoo that actually has the same mechanism as this. So there's two of these. Aerosolless pumps are just a really nice way to actually get the dry shampoo into your hair. Because the nozzle is smaller than the salt shaker version, it just creates less of a mess. So the interesting thing about this dry shampoo is that one of the ingredients in this is activated charcoal. So none of the other dry shampoos have that ingredient in it. So it's a really unique, um, additional ingredient in the dry shampoo. And this one, as you can see, is the brunette version. It does come in two colors. There's the brunette and the blonde. And I'm trying to show you, the bottom of this package is clear. So the dry shampoo itself is kind of a browny gray color. It's not super tinted, but honestly, this is just the right amount of tint. It's more tinted than the daily dry shampoo. So what this means is that Yes, if I get a whole bunch in my hair, I will get a white cast. If I have a reasonable amount of dry shampoo in my hair, I won't have a gray cast or a white cast. And because it is lighter in tint, it doesn't actually change the color of my hair. The way you're supposed to use this is a little bit different. So it's marketed as an overnight dry shampoo. So you're supposed to put it in at night and then sleep with it. I never used to do that prior to using this dry shampoo, but now that I've kind of thought about it, I actually do that with any dry shampoo that I have. And it really does help because you do, you do produce oils on your scalp overnight. And when you use this to absorb the oils at night, it helps when you wake up in the morning for your hair not being as oily. Sometimes I need to add a little bit more in the morning, but I find that if I wait and don't put any dry shampoo in until the next morning, I feel like I need to use more dry shampoo than if I put some in at night and then maybe follow up with a smidge more in the morning, but generally it really reduces the amount of dry shampoo in my hair, which also is nice because it, it just feels better and your hair has a better texture, it has a better just feel to it if you have less dry shampoo in. This does do a pretty good job of, of absorbing oil. I wouldn't say it is the best at absorbing oil. I think the Daily Dry Shampoo and the Coco Lavish are a little bit better at um, just oil absorption. But if I use this as more of a preventative measure, it's really good. 
So I actually have this one in my hair today and this is second day hair. I put um, this in last night and I honestly didn't end up needing to retouch it um, this morning. I was able to just use the dry shampoo that I had in last night. But I think my hair looks pretty good with this. And you know, this is pretty good for second day hair. This gives you like a little bit of volume, but really not that much. Um, it's mainly just oil absorbing. But I really do like this one. This one's more expensive. I think it's around the 20 to $25 price range. You get 0.8 ounces or 25 grams. Pretty sure you get less dry shampoo in here. The one negative about this dry shampoo is I do feel like you go through it really quickly. I had a bottle previously and I felt like I just went through it really fast and I feel like I'm going through this one pretty rapidly as well. It does work really well, it's just expensive. That's the only con about it is really the price. The next one is from Root. This is also a pump. It's some, It's got the same mechanism as the Kai Natural Dry Shampoo, but as you can see, you get quite a bit more product. This is just a much bigger container. Um, it's 1.8 ounces, whereas this one's only 0.8. And they're pretty close to the same price. For So this one is around the 20 to $25 price as well. And as you can see, I do have a brunette one which is tinted. And this one doesn't white cast my hair because of the tint, but it also has a bit of the same problem as the Coco Lavish dry shampoo in that the color of the dry shampoo actually will kind of modify the color of my hair. It doesn't white cast it, but it turns it, um, in this case, because of the way the color is, it turns it like a little bit reddish. So as with the Kaya Naturals dry shampoo, I really like the way that you dispense this. I find it to be easy and also not create a lot of mess. And this dry shampoo is really good at absorbing oil, but it also is really good at giving your hair volume. It's got a bit of a sticky consistency, but if your hair is flat like a pancake and you want your dry shampoo to actually volumize your hair, out of all the dry shampoos, I find that this one works the best to actually give your hair volume because it's got that bit of stick. So once you get it in there, you can actually create volume and that volume will hold throughout the day. The con about this is that sometimes it's a bit hard to get the dry shampoo out of your hair because of the grittiness. Like you really have to be scrubbing your hair and using a shampoo that really lathers and cleans your hair very well in order to get this out. Otherwise, you're gonna still have residue left behind. I believe the scent in this one, yeah, it's lemongrass, orange essential oil, um, and lime. It's got a very citrusy scent, which we know I like. So also the main ingredients in this are uh, clay and arrowroot powder, and also a little bit of silica. So this one works really well, and I really have been enjoying it. And as you can see, I've gone through quite a bit of it. But I didn't go through this one as fast as the Kai Naturals. That one I just seemed to go through faster, but you know, it is what it is. So the final one that I've been testing out is this one from Modern Minerals. And this one it, I decided to try because I actually saw Andy, the Green Queen, talking about it. And this was her favorite dry shampoo. And I originally was just going to film this video talking about the other dry shampoos and be done with it. But then I was like, no, if she likes this one, I need to give it a try. And so I decided to pick it up along with some other um, Modern Minerals hair products, which I actually like all of them. I have heard really good things about Modern Minerals hair products, um, about the Momi hair products, and I'm really glad I decided to try them out because I think they're really good. So this dry shampoo, I also like the dispensing mechanism of. Yes, you have to shake it out because the dispenser is really small. It doesn't get everywhere. You're able to actually control where you put it. And this one, you get 118 grams of the product, which is quite a bit. And I believe it's in the 20 to $25 price range as well. So this dry shampoo uses um, baking soda, cornstarch, and some clay as well as the ingredients to absorb oil. So I also really like this dry shampoo. I find that it also works really well. This one is not marketed for blonde or brunette hair. It's just got a general tint to it. I've got the dry shampoo right there in the palm of my hand. And you can just see that it's got a little bit of a tint to it, but it's not too white and it's not too dark. And I was nervous about trying this dry shampoo at first because my hair is brunette. But if you've seen Andy the Green Queen, she also has pretty dark hair as well. And she said that this one didn't white cast her hair. And I agree with that. It, I am surprised given the color of it that it doesn't white cast your hair. 
This one does a really great job of um, absorbing oil. It doesn't really give a lot of volume. It gives like a little bit, but not that much. Nothing like the root. But I really, really like this. Like this has shocked me. I did not expect to like this as much as I did, but I'm definitely a fan. If I had to rank these, honestly, I would probably rank this one the highest. Like I have been enjoying and reaching for this one so much. Um, the ease of application is really good, the lack of white cast, the way it absorbs my oil, the lack of mess. I'm also able to get this one washed out of my hair really easily, which is really nice. It's just a good dry shampoo. I would say probably second would be the root, just because it is really volumizing and it is really oil absorbing. So if I really need a heavy duty dry shampoo, I will reach for this one because I know it will do the job. This one is just slightly below the root just because I feel like you go through this product really quickly and you get a little bit less of it. So the price is high compared to the amount you get. It's still really good and still works really well. It's just a bit lower down on the list for me. This one I would say would come in next. So this is the Coco Lavish. And the reason why it's lower than the other ones is really just the messiness of it. If it were a little bit less messy, then it would honestly probably be a little bit higher than the Kai Naturals, but because of the mess, I found other ones that I like a little bit better and just are easier to use. And then this one comes the lowest down for me just because of the fact that it does white cast my hair, which no one really likes white casted hair, so that has moved down in terms of um, the dry shampoo. I just like the other ones a little better. I find that they don't white cast my hair. So I hope you found this video helpful, really comparing all the different dry shampoos and what I like about them and what I don't like about them. And if you have any further questions, leave those for me in the comment section down below and I will answer them. Let me know what your favorite dry shampoo is. Let me know if you've tried any of these, which ones are your favorites. Let me know all that in the comment section down below. And once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Instagram. My handle's at Naturally Beautiful Girl. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.